Hey everybody, this is Mr. Hall, right here, right here, talking to you and trying to teach you some more stuff. Now, we've talked about the cosine and sine and cosine function. Now, today, we're going to talk about doing some transformations of those sine and cosine functions. But if you think about the transformations we've done so far, these really work the same way. We're still moving up and down, we're still moving left and right, we're still moving, shrinking and expanding, we're still flipping it. That's all still happening here. So if you remember those, then this part should be pretty good for you. But the thing that you're going to have to know now is we're going to move left and right, but we have to figure out what the answer is. We can't just look at it and say that we're moving over this part or all that good stuff. So let's go and take a look at what the actual parts of the, of the sine and cosine functions are with the comes to our transformations. So I'm going to write this down. Now I want you to go to write this down also. And really with every transformation, I'm going to write this part down because each piece, each letter here, deals with some type of transformation. So each one of them are going to deal with something. But if you look at it, each one of these are the exact same letters for sine and cosine. So whatever happens for the sine function is going to happen for the cosine function. So these, each one of these transformations we're going to talk about individually. And then we're going to end up putting them all together and actually being able to um, actually do a, a, a long, big one. Because especially in the final exam, you're going to have to know how to do the big one, not the individual small ones. So we have A, K, C, and H. And we're going to start off with the A. And here, again, we're going to bring in some more vocabulary. So just make sure you know those two. So here, when we bring in our vocabulary, we start off with the letter A. And the letter A stands for amplitude. And for those that play musical instruments or like the guitar or the um, acoustic guitar or anything of that sort, you kind of know what a, you know what an amp is. You know, an amp is one of those things that can actually um, make your um, your instrument go louder or it can make it go softer or anything of that sort. So when it comes to our amplitude, it works kind of like the same way as an amp. So our definition for amplitude is the number. that tells how high and how low the function goes. So it tells how high or how low the function goes. How high and how low, sorry. So this is important to know because it's kind of like that whole shrink and expand thing. So it kind of shrinks and expands when it comes to all this part, this wonderful things. But the biggest part about this is A is always positive. Your amplitude is always a positive number. Remember, if it's a negative in front, it means the whole thing is flipping. So here, A is always going to be that positive number. So here, whenever we do A, we always deal with the absolute value. So A is always going to equal the absolute value of whatever A is. So it's always going to end up being positive, in other words. So that part, we should always remember. So here, let's go to an example here, where we deal with just the amplitude. Just the amplitude. All right, so we're going to say this is example two. And actually, now let's make this example one. Let's make this a whole nother section. So this is a brand new section here. So we're going to make this example one, and we're going to graph y equals three sine x. Oops, sorry. So you can see, there you go. 
we're going to graph y equals 3 sine of x. Now with this, make sure we pull out that function that we had, or that paper that we had that talked about, um, that talked about the, the paragraphs of sine and cosine. So make sure you get that paper out with the parent graphs of sine and cosine because that's going to help us out when we deal with our graphs here. So we're talking about the sine function. So we know our graph is going to look something like this here. And we're going to put all the great stuff in there with our amplitude. And really to tell you the truth, the amplitude is going to be one of the easiest things that you do. That's it. It's going to be easy. So here... Our first step whenever we deal with our graphs is we're going to label our graph. So that's that first step is to label the graph. So here, if we go back and look at what we have for our parent graph, so we come back here. And this is one of those reasons why it's so important to know your graphs, not just come back and look at something and being able just to copy it. It's best to know it because when it comes to this part, all you have to do is just do all the stuff that's on here and label it and then do all the, then graph everything out. But if you don't know that part, that means you have to go back and find the paper and then look at what the paper says and then copy the paper down and all the good stuff. So here, this is what we're going to do, what we're going to use. So we're going to graph this out. And all I'm going to do here, I'm not going to deal with the left side of the graph. All I like, we like to do is graph the right side. So I'm going to show just a little bit of that left side, that line over here on the left side, but we really don't graph it. So here, there's always those four tick marks. And again, our first step is to go ahead and label everything. So looking at our graph, we know we have pi over 2, we have pi, we have 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And again, if you look back at the actual sheet that we have here, those are the labels that we have. We have pi over 2 for the first one, pi, then 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. And again, you're going to have to know that in the order of that. It's not just oh, some random numbers you throw up there. You have to know the order because that's going to come back into play a lot later on when we actually deal with different things for transforming our graph. So make sure you, if you don't know them now, make sure you get to know them because you're going to see them a whole lot. And if you don't know them, that means you're going to be so far behind. All right. So at this point, we labeled our graph. That's the first step. That's step one. Step two, we're going to graph the parent function. Graph the parent function. So again, graph the parent function. And with this, just like we did with our regular transformations, the parent function is going to be a dotted line. So again, looking at what we have here, that's our parent function. So it starts at, it goes through 0, 0, then it goes up to 1, then it comes back down to 0, then negative 1, and then back up to 1. Back up to 0, sorry. So we go at 0, 0 here. We go up to positive 1. Come back down to 0. We go down to negative 1, then we go back up to 0. And we're going to do a dotted line for that. And again, remember, it's got to be a curve. we got to be curvy. So all your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. All right, so that's our parent graph. That's all we got to do for that. All right, so then the last step. It's really kind of like the easiest part when it comes to the amplitude. So for our last step, we're going to do the amplitude. And with our amplitude, we're going to say that any number, sorry, any number, ooh, not on the x-axis will move 
And it's important that we say the word not there. So when it comes to this, anything that's not on the x-axis is going to move. But how much is it going to move? So here our amplitude, we say that, that that's the number in front here. That's our A here. So our amplitude is going to be positive, so it means it's going to be a positive 3. This is already positive here. So what happens is any number not on the x-axis is going to move. So this is our x-axis right here. So that means this number is going to move and this one's going to move. Those are the only two that are not on the x-axis. So here, this one's going to move up to positive 3. This is going to move down to negative 3. So anything not on the x-axis is going to move. The top one's going to go up. The bottom one's going to go down. And so our final graph is taking it. It's going to be a solid line. And again, make sure it's curvy, not um, pointed. And that's it. That's all we're looking for. Now with that, again, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with arrows in both directions because remember the graph never stops. It continues on forever in both directions. And that's it. That's all you have to do when it comes to our graphing. We're going to label the graph. We're going to graph the parent function. And then we're going to do the amplitude. That's it.